so hello everyone welcome welcome to the uh, tutorial uh, lecture sessions on the reinforcement learning course i welcome you all all the learners so unfortunately this uh, uh, lecture is going to be a pre-recorded lecture since i'm outside station so for uh, week one i'll be providing a pre-recorded lecture you can find this lecture either uh, uploaded on youtube or in the uh, drive link folder which has been shared with you so uh, sorry about that i'll uh, i'll try to convey much of the points today and give a brief roundabout of what we have done so far and by next week we start when we actually start i can hopefully get to meet you and interact with you so that we can have a more fruitful discussion from next week onwards so very sorry about that so uh, i am supposed to take lectures every friday from 7 to 8 pm so uh, my timings are fridays uh, 7 to 8 pm so this is the time where i am uh, scheduled to take lectures every <coughs> week so do join in uh, i am one of the ta for this course uh, i should okay i should give a quick introduction about me uh, so my name is manav mishra i am a phd student in the ecs department at indian institute of science education and research bhopal so below is the uh, uh, my contact detail if you have any questions any doubt you can directly contact me here you can reach out to me so <clears throat> i am uh, going to be one of the ta uh, for this course uh, and this is basically a lecture series which is part of the nptl moc program and the course is on reinforcement learning being taught by professor avindran from iit madras all right so uh, yeah if you have any doubts any questions just feel free to reach out uh, also, I should give a little background about my research. I work in the area of multi-agent reinforcement learning in the field of uh, autonomous robotics. So if you have any questions or if you want to uh, connect with me, do feel free to reach out. So I guess this introduction uh, is enough. We can hopefully uh, continue with the lectures. So let's begin. OK, so uh, what I've decided today is I'll uh, maybe do a quick roundabout of what has been covered until week one. I'll give a brief uh, intuitive introduction about what reinforcement learning is. Then hopefully I'll uh, solve the practice ungraded questions for week one. I'll uh, <clears throat> discuss the uh, solutions with that. And if time permits, I have a Jupyter uh, notebook file with me. We can, uh, we can uh, probably look at uh, some uh, codes for uh, the multi arm banded problem. I have created some notebook file. We can run some uh, codes together and uh, I can share it to you later so that you, I have uh, kept places there where you can modify and add your own codes so that you can get a very hands on experience of what is happening. So if, if time permits, I'll uh, <clears throat> go to that. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll uh, follow as planned. My uh, idea is I'll simply cover. Uh, give a big, brief roundabout and uh, solve the practice graded question. So uh, I think it's better uh, uh, It's better if I uh, push the Jupyter Notebook part to the next week when I have a live interaction that would be more beneficial to you. But uh, yeah, maybe I can do that. So let's start. I, we'll see what happens, uh, how, how the time goes by. OK, sure. OK, so hi. Uh, I should uh, start with the very basic question of what is an RL? What is uh, what is RL? So reinforcement learning is nothing but it's an optimization problem. So what it deals with is that it deals with the formulation of certain models that learns to perform tasks in an environment by means of repeated interactions. So uh, it makes use of some some sort of a feedback mechanism, which is uh, a reward in terms of reinforcement learning which basically tells the agent that the task uh, that uh, or the action that the agent took, if it is being performed correctly or not, or how far it is from the intended uh, objective and uh, what uh, else it needs to know. So this reward is uh, some sort of a feedback that the agent gives to the environment. So it's about taking uh, some form of uh, suitable actions, responses, or even a sequence of suitable actions or responses so that we maximize uh, the reward in a particular situation. So RL intuitively can be considered as the science of decision making. So if you look uh, uh, at the image here, I'll give a quick uh, overview. So the RL is nothing but it's a to and fro interaction between the agent and the environment. 
the environment gives the agent states the agent looks at the state makes certain decision takes an action which uh, influences which affects the uh, environment based on the action taken the environment gives uh, some sort of uh, a reward response which uh, the agent receives back and so on so it's an it's a repeated interaction between the uh, agent and the environment so uh, typically the agent uh, what the agent has access to is uh, something known as the queue in the environment so the environment gives certain cues which are visible to the agent or if we uh, talk at it from an rl perspective we call it as a state so the agent has access to certain cues the environment gives certain cues which the agent has access to it's observable to the agent and based on the cues provided the agent uh, comes up with certain decisions certain formulations to take some actions in the environment so the agent uh, the queue leads to the agent's response which uh, basically <coughs> uh, affects the environment and the uh, environment uh, based on the response by the agent uh, gives out uh, a reward which uh, there is a direct uh, arrow connection from the reward to the queue so this is a, a closed loop system which uh, deals with the queue response reward uh, between uh, the agent and the environment this is uh, an intuitive understanding uh, just to give you a brief introduction about the uh, course in reinforcement learning okay so yeah reinforcement learning like stated it's the problem which involves interaction between environment and the reward signals and uh, the agents learn from interaction with the environment and it maximizes uh, a measure of long time performance okay and uh, if you look at the image here you have uh, the agent the, uh, the agent takes a certain action in the environment, uh, in the situation that it is in, and the action, uh, based on the action that the agent took, the agent evaluates the action, gives it as a feedback to the agent, as well, the, as, well as the agent uh, returns the effect of the action taken on the environment by means of a state. So the agent has input as a state, and it outputs action. It has state, it inputs, uh, it inputs state, it outputs actions, and uh, it uh, improves its decision making skills by means of the evaluation that it gets from the agent okay so uh, yeah quickly uh, telling you about the terminologies that uh, people use in reinforcement learning reinforcement learning broadly broadly can be can be uh, uh, categorized uh, having four terminologies i'll quickly cover each of them so the first terminology here is something known as a policy so policy is nothing but it's a rule used by an agent to determine what all actions you need to take. It defines the learning, uh, it defines learning agent's way of behaving at a given time. Or simply put, mathematically, a policy is basically a function that maps the perceived states from the environment and uh, to the actions that uh, the agent needs to be take in that situation. So it's some sort of a, a mapping model that the agent uh, follows to uh, input state and based on the state it uh, gets it uh, uh, takes a certain action so it's a mapping from state to action you can think of it like that second important thing is uh, something known as a reward a reward signal defines the goal in the reinforcement learning problem so at each time step the environment sends the agent some sort of a reward here in rl typically we take a scalar reward and uh, the agent's goal here is to maximize the total reward that it receives over the long run okay and uh, the third terminology here which we'll uh, look at later is something known as a value function which uh, typically you use in a value based method uh, so you so the value of a state is nothing but it's the total amount of reward an agent can expect to accumulate over the future so it's the expectation of the rewards that the agent uh, uh, would can it's the expectation of the rewards that the agent uh, should accumulate or can accumulate so while uh, rewards determine the immediate desirability, the values indicate the long-term desirability. So the reward is basically an immediate response that the uh, uh, agent gets from the environment. So for a particular action AT, the reward is the immediate uh, action R of T. But uh, this gives this gives the short-term desirability. What is the immediate next decision that I need to take? But if I want to look at it from a long term, if I want to achieve some broader goal, so I typically uh, uh, a person typically looks at the value function which is the expected which is the total amount of reward that the agent should expect to get over time so if it's not clear don't worry we'll uh, as the weeks go on hopefully uh, these things will become clearer i understand it's uh, very early to directly 
get on with the terminologies but uh, yeah it's important to give some sort of a brief <coughs> overview of what's happening okay and finally we have a model a model is something that mimics the behavior of the environment so model is basically the dynamics that is inbuilt in the uh, environment so the environment that the agent is, the agent isn't has certain uh, dynamic it uh, it has some uh, state action pair which it converts to the next state and so on so uh, in reinforcement learning uh, there are basically you can classify reinforcement learning problem into two types there is a model based reinforcement learning and there is a model free reinforcement learning so typically in model based reinforcement learning what happens is uh, the agent knows the model of the environment that it deals with so uh, the, the agent knows if i take uh, so and so uh, uh, if i take so and so state action combination i can get the probability with which i go to what all available states that i have but uh, typically this uh, having access to the model of the environment is not uh, very practical so uh, the applicability becomes limited in that sense so we have another uh, uh, type of rl problem which is the model free reinforcement learning problem wherein the agent uh, the agents don't have access to the uh, environmental model rather the agents repeatedly try to learn the model in the, in the environment by means of trial and error so they take a certain action they get certain reward and based on multiple such runs they form their own uh, version of the model that the environment seems to be falling about so it's a model free based uh, method which uh, is more useful in when you're dealing with some uh, practical application of reinforcement learning where typically you don't expect uh, to be provided with the model uh, a priori okay so i hope this is clear i'm sorry if it's not uh, if i'm going too fast i have no means to know since there is uh, it's a pre recorded lecture but uh, if if at all you have any problem feel free to reach out to me or uh, you can uh, write it in the discussion forum we keep on monitoring the chat forum and we uh, at the end of every week we uh, clear all the doubts or give uh, appropriate uh, replies so do check that out okay uh yeah um, this is uh, maybe this was uh, uh if you attended the introduction lecture for week 1 this was something which was covered in detail in the lecture series of how exactly you <clears throat> visualize states and how uh, the uh, how you would expect uh, uh, an agent to uh, learn to uh, reach certain states and uh, if it reaches a certain state how to proceed from there so uh, maybe i shouldn't take a lot of time you can uh, pro and you should probably go back and have a good look at this uh, uh, portion in the lecture series you will uh, have a clearer picture of uh, of this example case so i'll probably skip this for now yeah and uh, finally coming reinforcement learning uh, has a certain dilemma which is known as the exploration exploitation dilemma in short what is exploration what is exploitation exploration consists of making some decision that uh, seems to be optimal but it is not always optimal it is betting on the fact that whatever uh, observation or whatever data that i have collected so far it's not sufficient to identify the best option so i have some knowledge of the system of i have some knowledge of the environment it may not be the best possible it may not be the optimal sequence of actions that i need to take in order to achieve the objective so exploration means taking some sort of a sub optimal action with the viewpoint that there might be some better action uh, somewhere else so i need to take uh, some non optimal action because over time they should give me uh, a better uh, uh, an optimal solution in the long run so this is a more risky approach because uh, this can sometimes leads to poor decision because all explorations need not necessarily lead to a better outcome that there might be cases where uh, some exploratory uh, actions may lead to poor rewards but uh, uh, it also makes it possible to discover better ones so there is that and uh, then the second aspect is uh, known as exploitation exploitation is that whatever uh, 
decision you have taken so far and whatever observation or data you have collected so far you are content with that decision and now you want to exploit that so if i have uh, the uh, some action has the highest probability of giving me the best possible reward whatever i have collected so far i keep on exploiting that i keep on taking that action i keep on following the trajectory with the hope that this will give me a better result but you know that's not always true because <clears throat> this is uh, this exploitation typically uh, happens when you have explored the entire state space that the uh, in the en environment but uh, if you don't have uh, if you haven't explored explore the entire state space then exploitation is not possible because whatever exploit whatever uh, uh, observations that you have it's a local observation and uh, you're trying to be optimal with respect to the local observation that you have accumulated so far so yeah this is uh, some some sort of a safe approach that tries to avoid bad decisions as much as possible but also it prevents from discovering potential better discussion uh, decisions so there is the risky part there's a safe part exploitation is considered to be safe and risky is supposed to be <clears throat> some sort of a risky option right so like uh, if you look at the two boxes here like uh, if i have uh, two boxes one is a mystery price and one is a known reward of a uh, hundred dollars and suppose i am given a choice that uh, for one year uh, every month i get to choose between one of the one of the boxes and uh, let's say this continues for five years so i have five into 12 monthly i select a box and it goes on for five years so let's say i have 12 into 5 let uh, around 60 60 months so i can select boxes 60 times uh, per month i know first box contains a known reward of 100 it is static it is stable i'll get 100 dollar every time and the second box is a mystery price okay it can contain anything it could contain either zero rupees or a million dollars 200 dollars 150 something like that but the prices keep on changing so uh exploitation would be if i uh exploitation would be that i know box one contains the 100 reward so uh if i accumulate the expected total reward i should get 100 into 60 overall i should if I keep on selecting box one, I should get overall 100 into 60, which is 6,000, $6,000. You expect, if you keep on selecting box one, you expect to get $6,000 over the period of five years. However, if you uh, select the mystery box, because it's mystery, we don't know the underlying distribution or the underlying prize money or how exactly the, uh, what is the dynamics or what algorithm it is following that decides the prize money. Unless and until we try that, we will never know. So this uh, selecting the mystery box here would be the uh, exploratory action, while selecting a known reward here would be considered as an uh, exploitation. Exploitation. Exploit. Sorry, uh, it's exploitative exploitatory action. Okay. So uh, uh, reinforcement learning suffers from this dilemma. It's between exploration and exploitation. Where do you draw the line? Whether you want to explore or whether you want to exploit so uh we uh to understand such sort of a scenario uh, we look at uh some sort of a problem in rl known as the bandit problem okay so this bandit problem is typically uh an immediate uh immediate reward kind of a setting so you take an action you immediately get a feedback that is associated with that particular action so uh to put it shortly what is the bandit problem the bandit problem is typically like the uh, slot machines. If you have ever been in a casino, if you have ever been in a casino, this is like a slot machine which has a certain number of levers that needs to be pulled. So if you pull a certain lever, <clears throat> you get a certain price. Okay, and uh, that uh, price money is typically not fixed, but it has some sort of a variance. There is an underlying distribution which the uh, casino manager probably would have designed to loot the customers. Uh, so there is some sort of a luck involved in uh, hitting the jackpot, but uh, let's say you have unlimited tries because uh, pulling the arms is uh, free. You don't have to pay money for that. <clears throat> so uh, you want to typically find out what type of arms, what type of arm pulling should give me the best possible reward. So here uh, in the initial cases, we assume that the distribution is stationary. Uh, by stationary, I mean that each of the liver the uh, dis the distribution that they have, the underlying distribution that they have, 
is uh, constant with respect to time. The parameters do not change. So if you assume machine one has uh, a Gaussian distribution, then the mu and the sigma remains constant. So if I uh, maybe pull machine one, let's say a million times, I should uh, get uh, the bulk of the uh, points at the mean position. And uh, as I move towards the extreme region, it should uh, taper off. OK, so this is the initially we take the assumption of a stationary distribution because it's easier to look at. With time, uh, you move on to non-stationary discussion, uh, non-stationary distributions. I Yeah, and uh, this uh, also has been covered in detail in the uh, week one lecture where you have the stochastic approximation that you do. So there is a uh, there is a current uh, estimation that you have. Then you add a step size to it, and then you take the error term. Okay, if you remember week one lecture, this is something which is uh, explained pretty well. If not, please go back. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to take this pre-recorded lecture, so there is no scope for a live interaction. I can understand. Uh, I I may not be clearer in certain aspects, or you might want to clear your doubts. But I promise next week we'll have a very fun and lively interaction uh, with you all so just bear with this it's just an introduction introductory lecture so hopefully you don't miss much here okay uh yeah so uh i should quickly write something so yeah we're looking at the band-aid problem uh sorry about the handwriting i hope it's clearer so in bandit problem, let's say it's an n-armed bandit problem. It's an n-armed. It's an n-armed bandit. So uh, you have these possible actions. You have it's a bandit. It's a machine which has n levers or n arms. So these are the all available actions. This is A is the capital A is the action space, and at Time t, I select some action a t, small a t, and which gives me a reward of r of t. So the action gives me a reward. The state is the arm which I'm pulling. So it's an immediate uh, setting here. Again, some terminology. So you have something called as q of a. You have something called as q star of a star. OK, I understand few people have asked uh, this question already in the live forum. <clears throat> uh, we'll get back to you soon. Uh, we'll get back. We'll uh, individually address each of the concern. But just to make it clearer, Q of A, small Q of A, is the true expected payoff slash reward of arm A. So this is for a particular arm A. What is the true underlying reward that it is? It's the true uh, reward which we don't design, but the environment has it inherently. So it's the true expected reward that we expect to get if we pull arm A continuously. Okay, and then Q star A star is nothing but it's the true expected payoff slash reward of the optimal arm. So A star is the optimal arm, optimal arm A star. And Q star here is uh, the optimal uh, value function for the optimal arm. So star here indicates optimal. So if you if I say something like Q star A, uh, if I say something like Q star of A, so Q star of A is the optimal value function for arm A. And Q star A star is the uh, true expected reward uh, of the optimal arm A star. It's the optimal value function for the optimal arm. Uh, I hope I am clear. Otherwise, uh, we can take it up next week. Sure. Uh, yeah, so this is true.
okay this has to be q star a and uh should remove this okay yeah so this this should be the difference between q star a and q star a star okay uh cool uh okay so we move to the banded problem banded problem typically as discussed by uh, uh sir it has three properties quickly i'll go through it something known as an asymptotic correctness what asymptotic correctness does is it ensures that the best arm is selected as time goes to infinity so if i uh do this arm pulling let's say million time crores of time uh in the asymptotic limit i should reach the correct value so whatever the uh, value function that i am uh, observing or that i'm maintaining it should converge to the true expected reward that uh, is for that arm so it's the it should converge to the true expected arm that uh, for the for the given arm that i'm pulling so this is what we mean by asymptotic correctness uh second is uh, something known as regret optimality so by regret optimality what uh, we uh, what uh, one mean uh, one would uh, mean is that imagine if you know the true expected reward beforehand you know the optimal uh, you know the uh, reward that you get on selecting the optimal arm but uh, uh, if you are aware of that scenario but uh, since your agent will take some time to arrive at that particular reward scenario so the time which is lost in uh, reaching the optimal arm is known as the zone of uh, regret so if i were to draw it uh, if this is the optimal value that everyone needs to reach it's the for action a it's q star a and you start with some initial estimate so uh, because of your exploration exploitation behavior you would take some time and in the asymptotic limit you will reach here however the uh, region that you get this small region that you get is known as the region of regret so uh, typically you would expect one would expect to uh, reduce the regret optimality so to reduce the regret optimality i would like to increase the rate of convergence so uh, i want to ensure that as time t tends to infinity the total regret time becomes lesser and lesser so if i want to increase the time of regret i should probably not do a lot of exploration but if i do don't do a lot of exploration i might uh, end up in a suboptimal action so this uh, optimality is always considered with uh, the true uh, expected payoff known a priori so this is the regret optimality and last one is uh, known as <coughs> last one is known as the pack completeness or you say it's the pack optimality okay so uh pack stands for probably approximately correct so what it means is uh how probable you are to be within some approximate correctness region of the true value what is the probability how probable you are of being approximately correct uh so to write it down uh is the probability that your q star of a is is, is more or less within the region of q star a star times some uh, relative uh, distance of 1 minus epsilon this is the uh, relative <coughs> difference between q star a and q star a star uh, so uh, and uh, this probability should be greater than some 1 minus delta so i need to typically find uh, or i if i'm given 
uh, these two parameters epsilon for the correctness part and delta for the uh, probability part uh, given an epsilon and delta i want to minimize the number of time steps i take in order to achieve this complex uh, in order to achieve this completeness or in order to achieve this uh, uh, optimality okay uh, uh, it should be complexity not completeness sorry i probably miswrote it's packed complexity yeah please make a note sorry uh, i just uh, corrected this so this is what we mean by pack optimality okay and uh, after that the lecture takes a look on some value based methods so by value based methods what we mean is what we mean by value based methods is that uh, each state has a value a value is nothing but it's the expectation of the reward that you uh, achieve over a period of time so this value function if you uh, perform a value function for uh, for and for actions it's uh, denoted by the variable q and if you're looking at the value function for uh, state it's denoted by the variable v so we are looking at the action value function here so which we denote by which uh, we'll be denoting by capital q of t so capital q of t is the expectation of the reward that you have accumulated over time and it should uh, be as close as possible to small small q which is the true expected reward okay uh, so to write it mathematically this is written as from i equal to 1 to n i have my a unit uh, identity matrix which is a of i is equal to a this is one if a of i is equal to n a, a of i is equal to a times r of i which is the reward uh, i get at time step i divided by the whole divided by the sum over of all the entire uh, all the time i have pulled arm a ai okay or simply put it's the number of times I pulled arm A uh, and whatever reward I have accumulated over time, this is the QT value. So this is R1 plus R2 plus dot 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 Rn and this is divided by N. So this is a simple sample averaging that you're doing over, over, uh, over the uh, value function that you're maintaining. So uh, you typically one needs to uh, keep on collecting uh, the history of the rewards over time so that uh, you can do the sample averaging so that's one way to look at it or otherwise uh, otherwise uh, you do a stochastic approximation wherein you don't need to take uh, you don't need to keep uh, a track of all this r1 r2 r3 r4 and so on so you don't need to store it in a memory as such but <clears throat> what you need to do is uh you define it something like this uh, so this is a stochastic averaging we call it stochastic averaging okay and uh, this looks something like qt of a is equal to Q of t minus one a into n of a. So number of times it has been pulled beforehand plus whatever reward I get at time step t. Sorry. Yeah. Whatever reward I get at time step t, I'll add that times. times a of t when when uh, yeah it's basically if arm a is pulled whatever reward i expect to get i add that if not i always i go back with the previous uh, previous known q value at time uh, t minus 1 this 
is divided by <coughs> n of a plus a d equal to a. Now, now if I take this quantity as one, okay, I'll take this quantity as one to simplify the equation. It should look something. <coughs> sorry, it should look something like q of t minus one a n a plus r t the whole divided by n a plus one this is how it should look like and uh, so all you need to know is all you need to know is the uh, current reward uh, that you get for, on taking action a at current time step t and you just uh, add it to the previous known Q value. So you don't need to keep a track of all the rewards accumulated so far. So this is useful in that respect. And uh, once you have the estimate, once you, sorry. Yeah. Once you have the estimate of the value function, so uh, to select the best possible action, if you know the value, uh, if you know the uh, Q value at time t, so uh, the best possible action is nothing but uh, once you know that the best possible action here. The best possible action here is the uh, is nothing but it's the uh, you select uh, the action which has the maximum Q value or rather it's arg max of A of QT of A. Okay, this is the best possible action. You also call it as the greedy action because you are selecting the action which has the best Q value of whatever you have updated so far, whatever you have covered so far, whatever is the best you have, you select that action. So this is a greedy action, sorry. It's a greedy action, or you can think of it as it's an exploit exploitatory action. You are exploiting what's the best known information. So at a given time t, this is the best possible action. It's a greedy action. But of course, we know in uh, RL, this uh, won't give a good solution. The reason being that you need to have some sort of exploration when you're when you're dealing with uh, problems in RL because uh, if you go with the first uh, best action, so it uh you might not uh, always end up with the optimal action because there are many other uh actions which are unexplored and you are simply uh, exploiting the uh uh accumulator or no information that you have so far okay so uh to deal with that to deal with that in bandit problem instead of selecting always this at arg max of this uh we <clears throat> look at uh, a method this is known as Epsilon greedy. It's the Epsilon greedy algorithm. Okay. Or you can also call it as the near greedy algorithm. It means you're not exactly greedy. You're greedy most of the times, but uh, in Epsilon times, you <coughs> act unselfishly. Uh, or, or rather you select some uh, actions which is not optimal and uh, you go with the explore, exploratory action, right? So this is <clears throat> the epsilon greedy algorithm. So uh, what you do here is, uh, what you do in epsilon greedy is with probability of one minus epsilon, uh, With probability of one minus epsilon, you do it is arg max a of QTA, which is the exploitation action, but with the remaining probability, which is epsilon, which is a small value, you do exploration. So exploration is nothing but <coughs> random sample 
random sample from the available actions which you have, which is A uh, containing the arms that you need to pull. Okay, so this is the exploratory action. Okay, so you have an exploratory act. You have a you have uh, most of the time you do take actions that exploits the system, the known uh, uh, value based method that you have. And in some times you take a random sample, which is the, okay, I should add exploitation, sorry. Just to be consistent, this is exploration, exploitation, okay? So with probability epsilon, you take, uh, you do some exploration. So this is, uh, what uh, the this is what the epsilon greedy algorithm is all about so uh with probability one minus epsilon you select the best action and with probability epsilon like randomly from this uh particular uh data point but it so happened it may so happen right but uh, that well uh, like whenever you're uh, doing this random sampling you're going with the exploratory action it might so happen because it's a stochastic process that you again end up selecting the uh, best action because it says random sample, right? You might again come back to the best action. It's so it might so happen. So it's basically uh, some sort of a nuance how you deal with it. So you say that uh, instead of doing exactly a random sample, you do a random sample of the non-optimal action. Okay, but if you were to do a totally random sample, so you do exploitation, not with one minus epsilon. Actually, the modified uh, exploitation would be some one minus epsilon plus epsilon by n because you have a one by n probability of again selecting the uh, you may you have a one by n chance of again selecting the uh, you know uh, the optimal action from the uh, when you do exploration. So this is a little bit of nuance you need to take keep into mind. Uh, while coding, you might uh, decide however you want to, but uh, just to be mathematically consistent, I should. <coughs> I think this was also mentioned in week one, but just to cover everything up. So this is a fairly popular method that uh, people have been using uh, in order to uh, learn about the exploitation exploration dilemma, how to tune the parameters or how, uh, how quickly one can expect to uh, uh, converge to the true expected reward. So this is a very popular method and it has known to give good results over time. Okay, so this is the uh, epsilon greedy algorithm, uh, which is uh, a modification of the uh, greedy algorithm. Okay, so this uh, part, the epsilon greedy part, it has uh, something known as a, a random sample component. So uh, from all the non-optimal actions, you are randomly selecting an action that uh, you want to explore. But it might so happen, right? Uh, in some uh, some cases, uh, you might end up with, uh, you you know for sure, like uh, certain actions which are uh, so bad that you don't probably want to waste time exploring that. So if I uh, use epsilon greedy and keep on exploring, so there might be possibly I keep on selecting an obviously bad action. But I want like, if some action is bad, I want to uh, minimize the probability of selecting that particular action. And then I keep moving, I keep moving forward. So another variant of uh, solving this exploitation uh, dilemma is the, is the softmax algorithm. Okay. Uh, so softmax algorithm is uh, I'm basically taking, comparing the relative, uh, relative to the uh, relative to the other Q values that I have. What is the weightage that I give to the uh, particular arm that I'm choosing? So uh, the probability so the probability that I select arm T is given as E of Q T divided by B, 
be is a temperature parameter this determines the sensitivity of the weightage that you want to give so if you <coughs> make uh, b too small <coughs> then uh, uh, the probability of selecting arm a becomes huge i mean this no sorry uh wait let me first write it i i should fuse okay okay Okay, yeah. So here, uh, you are taking the uh, weighted average of uh, the Q value that you have accumulated so far, and with respect to the weighted average that you have, you exponentiate it so that you don't have a negative pointer on the left side. So you use an you uh, use E of Q of t, and uh, you divide it by a temperature parameter which is uh, close to beta. So if I uh, make beta too less, if as beta goes to zero, so this uh, this value keeps on increasing. So the probability of selecting action A increases with time. So if I uh, decrease beta, I'm uh, you know increasing its uh, the sensitivity of, uh, uh, or rather I'm decreasing the sensitive. No, I'm increasing the sensitivity of selecting action uh, A at time t. Rather, if I uh, increase beta, if beta goes to infinity, this term uh, becomes larger and larger and uh, it gets closer and closer to the uh, the sample average method okay so this is uh, the basic idea behind the softmax algorithm uh, i hope i told it correctly i probably should check uh, Okay, maybe uh, you can uh, verify this with the uh, course lecture that you uh, that you have in week one. Uh, I'll just give an introduction. So this is the softmax uh, softmax algorithmic approach. This is also one method people use to uh, clear out or filter out the relatively less uh, probable actions. So if I were to represent it, let's say you start, you have four four arms. Okay, so you have arm one arm two, arm three, and arm four. Uh, initially, you have all of them have some initial probabilistic estimate. Okay, so this is a, some sort of a histogram plot. This is an initial probability distribution. So it's like each of them has a probability of 25%, 25%, percent, 25%, percent. you start with the estimate. <clears throat> and let's say uh, I write the true expected reward, let's say A1, has expected reward of five a2 has eight a3 has 10 and a4 has minus five okay so with this with this respect we know a4 is obviously bad so if i sample it like a thousand times i should expect to get sorry uh, i should expect to get a distribution which looks something like this. I want A3 to have the highest probability. So let's say A3 should have, you know, uh, now 85% chance of being selected. Okay. A2 has, uh, say, 10% chance of being selected. Uh, sorry, I should represent it better. So A2, let's say, have a 10% chance. A1 has some 4% chance and A4 because it's so bad, it's, it has only 1% chance. So, you know, I'm removing the randomness that I had in the exploration in epsilon greedy. So there's a this random sample part. Uh, I remove that. Instead of that, I'm basically uh, evolving the probability distribution of all the uh, arms. I should write A1, A2. This is A3, this is A4. Okay, so this uh, soft soft max distribution takes this into account. Okay, so I hope uh, this is clearer. I think uh, this was pretty much uh, all that was covered in week one. So this is uh, 
the multi arm bandit uh, as we know so far so far we have been looking at uh, stationary distributions we have had some introduction to non stationary distribution where uh, the stochastic approximation uh, problem changes you have questions related to it in week 1 okay so i shouldn't uh, discuss more on that because you have a graded question on that and uh, yeah i think uh, that's pretty much uh, all i had maybe uh, i can finish it i should finish up the lecture by discussing the non graded assignment questions uh, i'll just take a one minute short break i'll drink some water come back okay yeah so uh we'll cut uh, week 1 assignment 1 only the non graded questions we will not be discussing the graded assignments at all or but if you have some questions you can reach out to me personally the reason we are not discussing it is because because uh we we won't be able to use the same questions in the next year uh in the next year's lecture then so that's why we usually don't uh, we avoid putting out uh, solutions to the assignment questions uh on the internet so it's available online so <clears throat> because this will be shared with you all and uploaded to youtube uh, we would uh, want to not discuss the solution for the graded assignment so i'm allowed to discuss the non graded assignment so uh i'll do that but if you have any questions you can you know just write it in the discussion forum or reach out to me uh, either of them is fine or there is another ta you can reach out to him so this should be uh, manageable okay so first question is which of the following best suits the notion of regret in a standard multi arm bandit problem assume bandits are stationary okay so we go back to the definition regret is the region if i uh, i start with some initial uh, uh, i accumulated some reward over time with uh, because of some exploration and exploitation i accumulate certain reward but if i had known the best possible action from the beginning and i would have selected i would have get, gotten obviously a better reward so there's a difference between the uh, reward that i would have obtained if i would have known the best action a priori and the reward that i obtained by by the uh, repeated trial and error between the agents okay so option one is difference between total reward that can i achieve no Uh, between uh, optimal action from the beginning and the total reward by choosing the worst action no it doesn't compare between the best action and the worst action but rather the uh, best possible reward that you could have achieved and the reward that you have achieved so option 1 is wrong uh, okay option 1 is uh, incorrect option 2 is number of time steps required for the solution to find the optimal action so no, this is not regret optimality but rather this is uh, yeah this is this is not the notion of regret optimality the difference between the total reward that could have been achieved by choosing the optimal action from the beginning and the total reward accumulated by our solution method this is the definition the correct definition for the regret optimality so this is the correct answer and last is difference between the um, possible reward that can be sampled by selecting the optimal action and the worst possible again it's comparing between the best and the worst there's no notion of a worst action in regret optimality so this is also the wrong answer so Yeah, the correct answer is option three. Cool. So this is a uh, first question. Okay. <laughs> Second is a uh, credit assignment problem is the issue of assigning correct mapping of rewards accumulated to the actions that that led to them, which could be the reason for the credit assignment problem in RL. So what do you mean by credit assignment? Is in RL you have two types of problem. There is an immediate RL setting like the bandit problems, wherein you get take an action. you get an immediate feedback action feedback action feedback there is a continuous uh, uh linkage between what action you take and what reward you get but typically what happens is let's say you're playing a game of tic tac toe or a game of chess the reward you get is not intermediate but something which you get at the end of the game <laughs> like let's say you're playing chess uh you get uh, after you win or lose you get uh, the possible reward okay the game one game loss but then uh, in chess there are certain sequence of move that you might have made you know uh 
let's say five uh, six moves back due to which you lost the queen and that puts you in a uh, obviously bad position so you lost the game so the credit for losing the game here is uh, happening because you took a bad decision 10 steps back but not the immediate uh, step where you checkmated okay so the rl agent uh, needs to identify the weakness that you had in your game and correctly assign the appropriate reward to that so this is the credit assignment problem so the issue with credit assignment problem is that uh, because the uh, games are uh, long so the feedback that reaches the agent is delayed it only gets uh, the agent only gets the feedback after completing the uh, after completing the whole game so this is the uh, credit assignment problem this this happens this does, never happens in a immediate rl setting but it happens in uh, uh, reinforcement learning where the rewards are getting delayed okay so uh, rewards are restricted to scalar value no that's not the credit assignment problem uh, rewards are delayed in the uh, rl setting yes this is the correct answer and uh, the other options are incorrect okay moving to question three a uh, bunch of statements which are given we have to find out which of them is correct okay so this is pertaining to the epsilon greedy uh, approach for a stationary environment okay always keeping epsilon as constant is a good approach that's incorrect because if you always keep epsilon uh, uh, incorrect even if you reach a million steps you obviously know the best possible action you have explored all the states but still you're using <coughs> but still you're uh, doing exploration with uh, probability epsilon so this is incorrect because uh, this would lead to some optimalities because you know the best possible action after uh, after some period of time. So uh, keeping epsilon as constant is not a good approach. Rather, one should uh, typically try to cool down the epsilon or uh, decrease the value of epsilon as you uh, go ahead with time so that uh, you focus more on exploit exploitation rather than exploration. In the beginning, of course, in the beginning, of course, you should have more scope for exploration, but with time, this should cool down. So this uh, number one is incorrect. OK, so that uh, removes option one. Option one OK, uh, then large values of epsilon would lead to unnecessary exploration in the long run. Yes, that is correct. If you have a large value of epsilon, it would need to unnecessary exploration. Sometimes you would uh, <coughs> want lesser and lesser exploration in the long run. In the long run, you uh, want uh, minimum exploration. OK, so keeping a large value would lead to unnecessary, ex unnecessary exploration. So this is correct. So option two is correct. So this option can be true. Only three because two is correct. OK, and uh, let's look at option three. Cooling down epsilon too fast is problematic as it cannot guarantee correctness in value estimates. Again, that is correct. If you cool down epsilon too fast, you're a favoring exploitation more so that means the uh, if you cool down too fast you haven't probably uh uh explored the environment well so this is problematic and it cannot guarantee correctness in value estimate this is also correct so the correct answer here is option four and uh, yeah okay sorry this is Option three. Yeah. Next, uh, option four. It's a standard uh, mathematical problem. Uh, so consider a standard multi-arm uh, banded problem. The probability of picking action using softmax policy is given. You have the formula for the softmax policy. Now, assuming the following action value estimate, all you need to do is you have the all possible Q values. So uh, it's a number crunch crunching game. Uh, maybe I can do that for you. Uh, you have probability of selecting A2. It's nothing but E of Q, T, A2, by beta divided by the summation over E of Q, T, B by beta. So if I were to put it, if we take beta as 2, I get uh, this 0.5. So it's E upon E upon, I have E2, E, e square, plus 
e two by five plus e plus e of uh, minus two. Okay, so this is what I get, and uh, if I quickly do the computation, uh, maybe I'll have to use my mobile phone. Sorry. So you can do it obviously. I'm just uh, finishing it up for completeness. Uh, you can obviously verify what's in what's correct and what's incorrect. Uh, divide by e square plus e to the power two by five plus e plus e to the power minus two, and uh, I divide it. You get Ah, okay. So you get answer as 0 0.0, 0 0.23, uh, five, something like that. So this is the closest answer that you have. So the answer here is 0 0.23. You can uh, verify how we got it here. It's, it's a simple exercise. You should, uh, you won't find it difficult here. Okay, so this is question four. Uh, okay, last question. And then we wrap up. Again, it's a bunch of statement. I have to figure out which of them is correct and which of them is incorrect. So uh, the rewards are obtained at a fixed time after taking an action. Is it incorrect? Not always. If you're doing a bandit problem, yes, you get the rewards at a fixed time. If you're playing a game of chess, you get it after the end of the uh, end of the episode. If you're playing tic-tac-toe or something else, there's some sort of a delay. So it's not always a fixed time. So uh, option one is incorrect. So that uh, Eliminates. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, it seems not to be working. I'll figure out. Okay, fine. I'll just, uh, it's anyway a reading question. I don't need to do anything. Uh, so uh, first option is incorrect. Reinforcement learning is neither supervised nor unsupervised. Yes, this is true. This was uh, discussed in detail in the introductory lecture. Probably go back and check it out. Statement two is correct. Then two reinforcement learning agents can learn by praying against each other. Yes, this is true. There has been, uh, it has been shown that if two agents are forced to play against each other, then they collectively uh, uh, improve uh, and uh, try to get better than each other. So it's a adversarial kind of setting and uh, doing that can result in better performance. So statement three is correct. Statement four is always selecting the best action with maximum reward will automatically maximize the winning probability in a game. Uh, that is incorrect. Uh, if you are always selecting the action with maximum reward, that then you are uh, selecting uh, a, a greedy action, and uh, you typically don't expect, you typically don't want uh, uh, in a greedy action to, uh, you don't always want to take the greedy action. You should have some scope for exploration in order to have uh, better results in the long run. So uh, statement four is incorrect. So the correct uh, option here is statement two and statement four, which is option three. Let me try again. Ah, okay. So the correct answer is option three. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that brings to the end of the lecture that uh, uh, of the week one uh, TA tutorial class. Uh, again, I should apologize for not being able to take it live, uh, but yes, I'll see you next Tuesday. If you have any questions so far, you can uh, talk to me. Uh, there's a discussion forum. Uh, and uh, yeah, next week we'll uh, look at some uh, uh, whatever is being covered in uh, week two. It's uh, covering uh, the upper confidence bound, Thompson sampling, and stuff like that. And also we'll look at the uh, Jupyter notebook on how the, how exactly do we go with the coding as coding part of it so that you get some hands on experience. And yes, thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you for taking out your time. Uh, this uh, 
lecture you will find it <coughs> recorded uh, in the drive folder which might have been shared with you or even in uh, my youtube channel which is uh, provided in the by the pmrf team uh, sorry by the nptl team so uh, thank you thank you for attending thank you for taking your time i hope uh, you had fun uh, you learned something good uh, and next time uh, uh, i'll try to make it more interactive by uh, interacting with you and uh, We'll have uh, fun over the period of time. So thank you and I'll see you later. Okay, bye.